thank you very much, and it's good to Sorry. be with you uh, uh, today. Sorry, Jonathan, just to interrupt, I will just put you on the big screen for the people. Uh -huh. Yes, we would love to see you. There you are. Oh, there's me, actually. Let me unpin myself. Um, okay, awesome. There we go. And I will just close that one. Sorry about that. Yeah. And Joshua is a man of a thousand faces. <laughs> <laughs> and voices. <laughs> and voices, too. Mm. Okay, just to uh, answer the question uh, from the chair, uh, you can uh, find uh, My Society Australia online, mysociety.org.au, uh, uh, My Society, one word, two S's, and you can join uh, there as a, as a member. All people are welcome. Okay, so as the chairman uh, said, uh, we would like, we be My Society Australia, would like to establish a Myers Analog Research Station uh, in this country. Uh, at Arkarula in the northern Flinders Ranges. So what are these stations? Why do we want to establish them? Well, an analog research station, Mars or for other planetary surfaces, provide a complementary platform for integrated activities related to planetary exploration in the field. Uh, complementary to research carried out in hangars, in enclosed facilities, in the Antarctic and so on, and critically in the field, because there are things that you can test uh, in the field uh, that are much more effectively than you can in a enclosed environment uh, or in the Antarctic, just like in these environment, those environments, uh, you can test things more effectively than you can in the field. So there's a complementary system. Uh, you can explore things like the habitat design and operation in a field environment, uh, you can simulate uh, EVAs uh, with uh, people doing real work, real engineering tasks, real field uh, science tasks, uh, and uh, look at the effectiveness of the uh, different ways in which those EVAs can be executed. Uh, you can test uh, equipment, tools, uh, exploration systems, uh, communications, and so on uh, in a real field environment. Uh, field science, uh, particularly astrogeology, geological analogs, uh, and astrobiology, looking at extreme uh, environments and the microbes and other organisms that colonize those. Uh, you can look at field at human science, uh, biomedical research, the focus of this conference, uh, human factors, uh, psychosocial interactions, the environmental conditions that uh, are created within these um, analog stations. And lastly, they are a platform for education, for outreach, uh, and for public engagement. And uh, as our chair mentioned, uh, quite a few of these have been set up in uh, various locations around the world, starting with FMARS in the Canadian Arctic in 2001. And, and now there's almost been an explosion of them. Each has its unique features, each has its uh, attractive aspects. Uh, and uh, the one we want to set up at Arc Ruler is the only going to, so far the only one of its type in the Southern Hemisphere. And here's our, here are examples of some of the extant stations, uh, very similar, FMARS in the Devon Island, MDRS in Utah, High Seas Hawaii, and DMARS uh, in Israel. So what sort of work can go on in these stations from an astro uh, biomedical uh, perspective? Uh, lots of work can be done in other areas, but let's focus on that. And I'll focus on the work that's been done uh, mostly at MDRS and FMARS because they're the ones that I'm most familiar with. So one of them is obviously um, plant growth experiments. Uh, this is the MDRS greenhouse um, where um, both in soil and hydroponic work has been done. Uh, also tests uh, have been carried out of semi-autonomous hydroponic units which can fit into individual cabins and various nooks around the station itself. Uh, these sort of facilities can be automated. And so the Mars Institute, for example, also Devon Island has the Arthur C. Clarke Greenhouse, which is a highly automated facility. Waste manage, management. Um, sometimes things go wrong that require improvised hazmat gear to unclog the toilet. Uh, in the Arctic, you've got to do gruesome things like burning each other's waste, um, which isn't anywhere near as bad as it sounds. 
biological recycling. At the bottom right there, you've got an example of a biological water recycling uh, system, a living machine that has turned toxic. Uh, so you can, uh, you can study how waste is managed or not managed and try and improve systems in terms of reliability as well as uh, efficiency. EVA operations, how do we work in the field? Uh, how do we use equipment? Uh, how do we, uh, such as uh, sampling tools, um, control interfaces on the suits, uh, drilling technologies, uh, various types of spectrometer and so on. Uh, how do these, uh, do we collect the data in the field on the suit or do we relay it back to the uh, station in real time? What are the advantages and disadvantages of each? What are the costs involved in terms of uh, resources, power, time, bandwidth, and so on? Crew care, right? people being people. Um, we personalize the space. We uh, take over our hydroponic plants and we put little gardens into them. We uh, bask in the sunshine through the windows, uh, uh, sitting next to the hydroponics. Uh, we celebrate. Uh, events like birthdays together. Uh, we have communal events like watching movies and so on. Uh, and a field station allows uh, people in a remote environment, a small team similar in size to what we actually have on Mars or the moon or an asteroid mission uh, to be studied of how best for the crew to look after each other and to be looked after by the mission support system. Field astrobiology, uh, this can be looking at the sort of features that people really would be interested on in Mars, such as stromatolites. Uh, we can look at um, extreme microbes, such as endoliths and hypoliths living in sheltered microenvironments uh, in rocks, the sort of environments which might host life on Mars or at once hosted life there at some stage. Or we can use uh, terrestrial ecosystems like uh, lichens, which we don't expect to find on Mars, but are nonetheless uh, useful analogues in training the techniques in which we will look for life on Mars. And then how do we process these results back in the laboratory? Um, we can't, uh, one of the advantages of having a crew on the surface of Mars is they can work in real time and uh, do the preliminary work in, when it comes to sample return of selecting the best samples, the best materials uh, to return to Earth. It also allows iterative research. Uh, with a robotic mission, which is very, very slow, which are very, very slow, uh, you generally only get one or two bites of the cherry. But with, high with a high speed and reaction time of a crewed mission, you can visit and revisit sites uh, as required. How can we use laboratories? How do you design laboratories? to maximize that. Uh, what equipment do we take? Volume is limited, power is limited, uh, human resources are limited. So how do we design those laboratories? All be explored in an analog facility. Remote and emergency uh, medicine. Uh, so the University of Colorado School of Medicine and the Department of Aerospace Engineering Scientists carry out uh, field training at MDRS in how to deal with emergencies such as uh, cardiac arrest, or an astronaut injuring themselves uh, in a fall, um, or uh, problems like fire. How do you respond to a fire emergency or some uh, toxic gases or whatever? All simulated, of course, um, but doing it in a simulated Mars environment in a remote area, uh, in, a, in a enclosed facility with limited contact back to mission support uh, allows us to, uh, to do it safely with a high degree of realism. Education and training. Uh, MDRS uh, annually hosts the University Rover Challenge, starting with a mere four teams in 2006. Uh, this year, they had 13 teams, hundreds of students, as you can see there, looking at an advanced a suite of field robotic trials with participants from all around the world, from uh, West Asia, Asia, from North America, South America, Europe, and Australia. And we can do this in Australia as well. Uh, back in 2016, we ran the first Akula Rover uh, Robot Challenge. 
uh, with teams from India, as well as Australia, from universities and the Mars Society uh, and from private industry. And the value of this that we're already seeing in terms of uh, astronauts uh, flying in space who have spent time at analog stations. So Jessica Watkins, uh, who's recently returned from the International uh, Sp uh, Space Station, was part of MDRS Crew 86, and uh, Sean Proctor uh, was part of MDRS Crew 122. So uh, stations such as MDRS, any planetary analog station, can serve as a way of inspiring people uh, to get involved in the space uh, sector and also uh, as part of the training they undertake uh, on that path. So why do you want to have one in Australia? Well, first of all, it provides access for Australian researchers in all of these disciplines. Uh, and not only for Australian researchers, but also regional and global opportunities. Um, Australia, uh, is well located uh, you know, from a time zone perspective uh, right across the Indo-Pacific region. It will be the only major example in the Southern Hemisphere, which means that our field season, which would be typically um, April through to October or November, is uh, diametrically opposite to the field stations or uh, the field season of stations in the Northern Hemisphere, such as MDRS, such as DMARS. Uh, and this allows uh, both linkage of these alternate field seasons, uh, and also allows uh, researchers to uh, visit the alternate hemisphere uh, in the off season of their local station. It provides an opportunity for a unique design. Uh, the Mars Desert Research Station, FMARS, represent a conceptual uh, ha habitat around a conceptual Mars mission. Uh, the other stations are sp spacey type buildings that, or structures that don't represent a particular uh, Mars mission architecture, but nonetheless do represent the sort of um, habitats that might one day be established on Mars. What we have is a unique design, uh, different to all the others, uh, which uh, needs to be explored. There's a growing international demand for these uh, field stations. So for example, MDRS, there's a waiting list of years, probably about two years to access it. And on top of that, only one in three uh, crews who apply to join or to, to attend actually are able to do so. Uh, and this is despite the uh, mushrooming of stations around the world. So there certainly is a market out there for a station which we want to have here in Australia. And we already have a history of analog research uh, at Arcarula, be they uh, field robotics, uh, be they extremophiles in the radioactive hot springs of Paralina, uh, um, or be it in the testing of um, uh, EVA systems uh, in Arcarula and elsewhere. So why did our Mars Society Australia uh, select the Arcarula region? Well, first of all, it's accessible from Adelaide, uh, which provides international connections. It's about a eight to 10 hour drive, depending on how fast you're prepared to go uh, from Adelaide. The owners, the managers of the, of the um, uh, area, Arcarula Propriety Limited are hospitable. Uh, pro they provide uh, suitable support infrastructure at the Arcarula village, including additional accommodation, uh, communications, internet access, uh, and uh, also uh, workshop facilities. Uh, there's reasonable access over much of the region using existing tracks. Uh, there's medical evacuation possibilities. There is an RFDS um, airstrip um, a short distance away. There are alternate airstrips uh, used by Arcarula and by the Beverly Uranium Mine, which is not that far away from where we propose to put the station. So in the event, of an accident, we can evacuate our people very, very quickly. The landscape is Mars-like, uh, especially on the plains to the east of the station. Uh, the terrain and the geology is very varied. Uh, there's uh, 1.8 billion years of geological history recorded there. There's diverse biology in terms of extremophiles and paleontology, particularly in terms of the uh, features such as stromatolites, uh, which um, uh, are the sort of biological structure that we might find 
on Mars. The station is a location that can be isolated from the public for long periods of time uh, if people want to carry out um, isol uh, research requires isolation. And it can be linked to external education outreach, especially in geology, astronomy, uh, astrobiology, medicine, and engineering. Uh, there's already an extensive series of observatories, some robotics, some in person at Arcarula, uh, and we can link in with those. So where is it? Well, here's the Northern Flinders Ranges. Um, you can see Lake Torrens and Lake Frome there in the, in the Google Earth image, and you can see them also uh, in the, um, the map in the top left-hand corner. Uh, Arcarula is in the in the ranges itself, and the station that we the location for the station is on the juncture between the plains and the highlands uh, in the center of the circle. Uh, that circle is 200 kilometers across, 100 kilometer radius. Uh, we selected that because when we go to Mars, we're going to be landing somewhere safe and boring. The engineers always win in this regard. Uh, but we want to, uh, from that central location, we want to access sites of scientific interest and that have the resources to sustain long-term human presence. And uh, in the 100 kilometer radius, Markarula, we have a diversity of sites, uh, both in the bedrock exposed in the hills, uh, in the salt lakes, and in the plains. And some of the features here, uh, we have radioactive hot springs of Perelina that contain uh, microbes with radiation resistant DNA. Uh, as I mentioned, we, can, uh, we have already explored human performance in EVAs. We have uh, used and developed in conjunction with uh, SAVE Astronautics, robotic and human operations, uh, where um, people in simulated EVA have collaborated with uh, UAVs operated from several kilometers away uh, in a vehicle. Uh, and uh, on the bottom right, bottom right there, we have possible microbial textures in a fossil hydrothermal system. Uh, people have looked at these textures for a number of years without a confirmed result, but these are the kind of problematic structures that we may well find on Mars and that people will debate as to whether or not they're biogenic. And by studying these features, both in the field and in the laboratory, we can hone the techniques that enable people to determine the biogenicity of uh, features that we may find on Mars. So what's the nation of the nature of the station itself? Well, it consists of two main modules. The basic module are each either 18 meters long, <coughs> 4.7 meters of diameter. There's a cylindrical main body, 12 meters long with a nose, conical upturned nose, six meters in length. Uh, one of these is the habitat module. Uh, the other is a logistics module, which will come apart uh, in the field uh, to uh, with the um, a garage, which we would dock on to the habitat module and a separate forward section, which provides uh, support services. Uh, the internal volume is uh, just under 400 cubic meters, a bit larger than MDRS. Uh, and uh, the mass on the road is 22 tons. Ceilings are just over two meters. The station sits 0.8 of a meter above the ground. And we designed it for a nominal crew of eight although more can be accommodated uh, using the garage as a bunkhouse for short periods, such as uh, student camps. And uh, the nominal mission would be uh, four weeks, but with additional supplies, a perhaps smaller crew, you could go for much longer. Um, the details there for the uh, systems, essentially we're looking at the elect all electrical system, solar power, battery storage, uh, water, gray water recycling, uh, these are all off the shelf systems, uh, storage of wastewater, um, incinerating toilets and incineration of combustible waste all on site. So it's a test bed for autonomous, uh, low impact uh, architecture, as well as being a Mars analog research station. Uh, here's a, a drawing of one uh, configuration for the interior of the habitat module. Uh, the upper deck is a living space. Uh, there's a mess galley area. The flight deck uh, would uh, actually be used at the station as a quiet work area. At the rear of the upper deck, there is the individual cabins. The lower deck is the working deck. 
there is uh, an entrance, the main entrance to the rear, through a, a storage area, through to the hygiene area. Um, then there is a laboratory and workshop space, the medical isolate medical center. And then people can go up the stairs to the living area at the top. There's a second exit uh, airlock space uh, underneath the nose. Uh, the uh, structural design is, is complete. Uh, and it uh, is basically steel frame with an aluminium skin. Uh, back in uh, 2017, the uh, project manager, the late David Wilson and I uh, built uh, a mock-up at Ames Research Centre of a segment of the station where we were for convenience separated the upper and the lower deck. And it shows that um, uh, it's surprisingly roomy. There's, um, despite the aspects of the cylindrical design, the cabins are large enough uh, to sleep in. Uh, the lower deck is wide enough uh, to work in. So where are we up to at present? Uh, well, we uh, need to fund the station. We've been promised a quarter of a million dollars Australian from the US society uh, to, um, uh, towards construction once that actually starts. Uh, the target at this stage is about $2 million. Um, there's a certain degree of flexibility there given the inflation of construction costs in Australia at present. Uh, we're looking at a partnership with other organizations, so we need to formalize relationships with them and a corporate structure agree agreeable to all. Uh, the final review of the design and the integration of the interior uh, with the structure needs to be done. Of course, we need to get site permissions and clearances and then go ahead with the tendering process, commence construction. Uh, the business model would we are looking at uh, would be based around that uh, carried out at MDRS and high seas uh, and so on, uh, essentially self-funded uh, self um, uh, by, uh, by the users with uh, flexibility, depending on whether it's a corporate user or whether you're looking at students. Uh, if you have any more questions, uh, please uh, feel free to contact uh, myself or the Mars Society Vice President Earl White on the emails uh, addresses there below. So, questions? So I see Ariane has asked me about access for uh, student programs. Uh, that uh, certainly is what we envisage. Uh, so there are student groups, um, uh, both high school level and um, uh, university level attending um, uh, attending the, uh, the station. Uh, and of course, the Arkarula region is already used by a number of universities for field science, particularly geology. Uh, various universities around Eastern Australia go there every year to train, um, uh, to learn the, uh, the tricks of field, field work, and we can integrate with that. Uh, and another question about the Australian Space Agency. Um, we'll 